Oh, the weather outside is frightful, so stay inside where it's delightful. We know how to worship at home, so let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Good morning and welcome on this snowy, snowy day to worship with United Lutheran Church. Here in United Sanctuary, it's just Pastor Peter and I and Darren Lee. Thanks to Darren for taking good care of all of us this morning. The sanctuary looks beautiful. It's been decorated uh, by our confirmation students and their families and the Barda family last uh, week on Wednesday. And we look forward to all of you being here and enjoying it together with us. We're thankful for the opportunity that technology affords us to be together in worship despite the weather. And our service this morning will be a, uh, a very abbreviated service of the word. Not even the snow can keep us from announcements. And so I'll share just a few of those together with you this morning. Uh, Pastor Peter and I and Molly Hoganson have been creating weekly devotionals uh, that are family friendly for United Lutheran each week in the season of Advent. And those devotionals are available online, or you can stop by the church this week and pick one up as well. This coming Wednesday, December 8th at 6 p.m., we will be sharing in dinner church worship once again. This has been a great experience for those of us who've participated in it. We've been able to share in some good food, but even more, we've shared in meaningful connection to Christ and to one another. If you hope to join us this week, we ask that you would please pre-register uh, either online or by calling the church office, and that will make sure that we are prepared for you. A word of thanks to all of you who um, have joined and committed again to the work, the mission, uh, the ministry of United Lutheran Church for a coming year by filling out and submitting your pledge cards. We appreciate your support to the work of Christ through this congregation. For those of you who haven't yet completed a pledge card, we would encourage you to do so. It's so very helpful as we plan and prepare for a new year of ministry. And we encourage those pledge cards to be submitted to the church office by Tuesday, the 21st of December. In other announcements in our worship bulletins, uh, this coming Sunday, a week from today, is the annual Good Gifts Christmas Fair at United Lutheran Church. And we're back in person again this coming Sunday. The Good Gifts Christmas Fair is this amazing opportunity for us to share needed, life-saving, life-giving gifts with our neighbors across the street as well as friends around the world. Once again, United Lutheran Church Foundation is offering matching funds of $5,000 for the fair. And there's also matching funds that have been given this year in loving memory of Joanne Corey. And those matching funds are for uh, Moringe Sekoine Secondary School, which was especially dear to Joanne's heart. So a great opportunity uh, to do good in the world this Advent and Christmas season. The Good Gifts Christmas Fair takes place a following worship Sunday, December 12th from 1130 to 1 p.m. There's also um, a chili feed that will take place as well. So come on downstairs for a warm bowl of chili and the opportunity to do good. We are also uh, sad that our special guest speaker for this morning, Rahel Mitula Williams, who is um, with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and works with Global Missions, is not able to join us this morning because of the weather, but she will send word to us uh, as she's able to, and we will pass that along to all of you. I believe that those are the announcements I'll leave with you this morning, and I now uh, will ask you to turn to the lighting of the Advent candle for this second Sunday of Advent. If you have a candle at home or an Advent wreath, uh, please light the candles with us at this time.
We praise you, O oh God, for this circle of light that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, kindle within us the fire of your spirit, that we may be light shining in the darkness. Enlighten us with your grace, that we may welcome others as you have welcomed us. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, also with you. and let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this second Sunday of Advent comes from the prophet Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, the first chapter. Paul writes, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the regions of Atreia and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was ruler of Abilene during the high priestess, priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, it's that time of year for John the Baptist to make his annual appearance, and he arrives on cue, uh, no bad weather stopping him. Well, John the Baptist, who speaks out in our gospel for today, was one of the most colorful characters of the Bible. 
He wore a cameled haired coat long before such things were fashionable. His diet consisted of locusts and wild honey. His marketing techniques, however, would be considered subpar at best. He went out into the wilderness, away from the city, away from the crowds, to attract crowds. He seemed almost determined to fail. Despite all these things we would call poor advertising, the Bible tells us that people from all around the region were coming out to see him, to hear his message. They were flocking to him. The message John shared in the wilderness came primarily from the prophet Isaiah, who wrote at a time when Israel was in exile in Babylon. Separating God's people in Babylon from their homeland was a wilderness, a barrier that appeared impossible for them to deal with. The promise comes from Isaiah chapter 40, and John uses his words here, and it's words of comfort that will come to God's people, that in the wilderness a way will be prepared. The way will be prepared, but not by them, but it will be God's doing. The people of Israel exiled in Babylon could not make a way for themselves in the wilderness. God had to do it by bringing one empire down and raising up another, one that allowed the people to return to their homeland. You see, in the geopolitics of the ancient Middle East, these people of Judah were nobodies. They were insignificant, but God made a way for them, a way for them through the wilderness and out of their exile. We now fast forward to the time of John the Baptist, where he uses these words from the prophet Isaiah about making a way for his people of his time. But there's a problem. How could these people make a way for themselves? They were being crushed by the hated Roman rulers of Tiberius and Pontius Pilate and their puppet rulers Herod and Philip and Lysanias. How could these oppressed people make a way for God's coming? How could these people prepare for their salvation when they didn't know when or how it would happen? But John persisted in his message and his proclamation, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The way will be prepared, but not by them, but by God. All they have to do is make a space, make a space in their lives. Repent, John says, and walk the way God has prepared. For one is coming who will make all things new. For he is the one who makes every valley to be filled and every mountain and hill made low and the crooked made straight and the rough ways made smooth. Emmanuel, God with us, is coming, John proclaims. In this Advent season, John the Baptist reminds us once again that God is making a way for us through our wilderness of this world by the birth of a baby in Bethlehem. Through this lowly birth, all flesh shall see salvation, God tells us. For Jesus comes leveling the mountains, the mountains of our fears and our prejudices and our pride and our selfishness, offering us a vision of the horizon of new life that lies ahead. Jesus fills in the valleys, the lowest places in our lives, our worries, our griefs, our doubts, offering instead a message of comfort and peace and hope that can raise us up so that we too may know and experience the joy of God's timeless mercy and love. Jesus straightens out the crooked ways of our sinful humanity with its injustice and violence and hunger, promising forgiveness, peace, and abundance. Our Savior Jesus Christ comes making a way in the wilderness of our lives, offering us a new way of living and being in this world and in the world to come. Jesus offers us and all people a way. You know, before the followers of Jesus were called Christians, they were most often called the people of the way. 
They followed this way of being and living because of their encounter and their relationship with Jesus. It gave their lives meaning and purpose and sustained them in all of their struggles and all of their trials in life, even including persecutions. All are invited to follow in this way, for Jesus seeks nothing less than the salvation of all. For our part, John the Baptist calls us to repent as well. That is, to make a way, make a space in our lives from all those things that would prevent us from following in Jesus' way. We cannot bring about our own salvation. We cannot make a way through our wilderness any more than those exiles in ancient Babylon and the crowds listening to John the Baptist on the banks of the River Jordan. But we can push aside those things in our lives that hold us back from stepping out and walking the road Christ has set before us. Whether they are our material possessions, or our fears, or wants, or desires, or even our politics, or anything else that is cluttering our lives, John calls us to push them aside, uh, to turn away from them and toward the one who makes all things new the one whose birth we are soon to celebrate, the one who has invited so many generations of followers to walk the way, the way that is set before us. See, the road is before us, and the king is coming, so let us be on our way. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. We pray for our bishops, Elizabeth and Tessa, for pastors, deacons, and churchwide leaders, and all members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America that together, at every level, in every place, our words and our lives may witness to your grace and love in Jesus Christ. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Send your spirit to provide care and protection for all living creatures. Provide shelter for all in threatening weather especially those who are homeless or without adequate heat or housing, those who must work outdoors, and all those who will travel. God of mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Send leaders to our nation, cities, schools, businesses, to work on behalf of those living in poverty, those who are hungry or homeless, and all who are oppressed. Make our leaders bold in their commitments to justice and care for all people. God of mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, lonely, or ill. We pray for your comfort and help for the victims of the Oxford High School shooting and all victims of gun violence. We pray for all who grieve, especially the loved ones of Lil Denny and Joyce Barrett. We ask for your healing for Jerry Rowland, Kevin Carlson, Alan Hieronymus, and all we name before you. Grant to all your people healing, wholeness, and meaningful connection to you and to others. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Send your spirit to your whole church and restore our joy. We pray for all those who point to Jesus in all things. Bless and grow the work of our global mission partners. Especially today, we pray for our siblings in Christ 
and partners in ministry in Tanzania, South Sudan, and the Central African Republic, provide opportunities to learn from one another and to share gifts. We ask also for your blessing on our Good Gifts Christmas Fair and the gifts that the gifts that we share will be used for your work of healing and hope. God of mercy, receive our prayer. Send your comfort to all those who have experienced hate, violence, and discrimination because of their gender identity. Comfort the family of Haley Gabriella Feldman of Beach, North Dakota, and move us all to expand our hearts in love so that all of your children are free of violence and know their belovedness to you. God of mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those most humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. God of mercy, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the blessing. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Dwell in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.